Yes, hello world, this is OSP. I welcome you back into this new video tutorial. Uh, sponsored by OSP IDPTO Solutions and Code Eagles. Now, in this video, simply today we're gonna learn on how can we make one on us a mobile money system. I remember last time making for you guys a sample on how the mobile money system tend to work like and tend to work. Now, if I may just run this piece of code and just take it straight through a real development, we're going to create up the file and start doing the, the stuff. If I press one, that's for send money, Airtel user, M10 user. If you enter something differently, it will simply end the system. Now, they need to enter the functions, but def then, then definitely if a toy user happen to enter something, then stops up the given application. So plus if I happen to come and press maybe one or two, it simply says that uh, withdraw. So enter the number to withdraw to simply send any wrong number details. Now members, I remember last time making for this sample. Let's take ourselves straight today on how to make a real complete application together. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to create my new file. And on this new file, I'm going to save it. As uh, I'm just going to save it now, YouTube stuff. I'm going to just call it maybe mobile money, mobile money mm, something like that. Now, remember, we need to do this. The first scenario if you try to check on a mobile money, if you are to change money or whatever, we need to first get this, you know, this first. Okay? So, I may just make my system a little bit nice by involving something like. Uh, putting something like this. So I'm just using uh, Python 3.6. No matter which version of Python you use, it will work out. We just call maybe uh, mobile mobile money uh, system. So that's the mobile money system. Uh, I would put backslash t backslash t to center it if you want. And I put backslash n to put go to the next line, but I may not give it here. So I'll just do that. So if you just check, we already have that with us. Now remember, we have these first two pieces of code which have to frame on this system. So that implies in simple time what we're going to do now at the moment. We shall need first of all to. Uh, uh, I mean, just take my commenting because remember now we shall need one nice uh, send money and withdraw money. So, mobile money system, I will simply say maybe welcome to mobile money system. Welcome, just put something and say maybe welcome to our uh, yes, mobile money system. Then, uh, just take uh, what we need to need the users. What the user is going to do, one, is maybe send money, two, which is going to be withdraw, withdraw money, things like that. So if you check right now, you have read the first printout statement uh, to be send money, then two, withdraw money. Uh -huh. You get? So just like what we, what I happen to have here initially. Uh, what I uh, happen to do uh, from here, uh, this is what I did at first. Where is it? Where is it? Hope you can see one send money, two with it, one money. So we need to come up with that equation here. Yeah, so one is for uh, send money. So, and then I need also the second one, which is going to be the second two, which is going to be with it, with it draw money like that so if you check right now on our application if you try to run now we need read down with this first session up so already have this thing center would even go further and try to do other new things around there and we just add some piece of code here and I just try to you know uh, do this so that we have something nice if possible so I'm just going to push this one twice like that so that we have something uh, wow I need to push it again backslash t 
to take it to a little bit tab it to take it a little bit to the center so you have something like that so we have mobile money system send money with the draw money so right now at the moment there's nothing to can't do it can't send money it can't withdraw money now we need to create something called a kind of maybe uh, i may call this but we need to get something called a variable which this variable is going to present our numbers uh on the numbers and these numbers in this case we have one and two whereby one represents uh send money and two represents withdraw money now if that's the case at the moment what we're going to look at the moment we're going to find a way how to bring those things on board so that when we say send money it can do that and we'll say withdraw money it can also do that now let's take into our look into our program uh, we have this so far at the moment so we need to define those variables if you just remember my previous video where I, what i did to do or what i did with you guys on this this is what i mean i need to first define a variable which is going to be handling up my stuffs because for choices so i'll go back in here my cards and i simply say uh user uh, choices or user choice so why am i giving this because i need a user to have a choice so maybe use uh, choice or uh, i may just call it choice choice is equal to one last the input now if at all you're using python 3 python 2.7 you need to say row underscore input like that mine i'm using python 3.6 or python 3 and above tend to use one last just input like that so what i'm going to tell the user at the moment would like now uh, the user at the moment to do the following piece of course or do the following uh, we need the user to say maybe uh, select select or enter choice enter enter choice like that now here uh, we can use backslash n or no now remember when you say enter choice we have one and have two now if you try to run now at the moment and say enter choice there is all enter choice but there's nothing the program will do enter choice when you press one the system will just stop because you say it's like trying to say enter choice so after entering choice what do you want me to do so I'm just putting backslash n there because I want the next statement to go to the next new line so that we can have the space there. So enter choice. So once the user happens to enter choice, there's nothing the program is going to do. Now let's handle that. So let's say give if if choice if choice is equal to now here we use to equal sign because you're equating to a given program. If choice is equal to one. So if choice is equal to one, what do you want the program to, to, to tell us? Maybe, uh, maybe, uh, maybe send money. Because we already know that when choice equals to one, say send money. That's what we have here and up. You get? Yeah, when, when, uh, when choice equals one, uh, send money that's it that's what we have and when choice is equal to two when choice equals to two this is with the draw with the draw money you get so that's those are the main two things we have i've just commented them down so you guys can interpret them understand them and can play around with so that implies in a simple time if i try to say do click this to simply say send money now we need to define something here send money to who maybe send money to empty user or send money to an airtel user so this way we're going to define our new variables you get because now we really find out that when if it is equal to one do that now we can also go back here and say else elif elif what if choice equals to two like that do the same thing let me just try to copy this so that i don't waste time again if choice equals to two do the same thing this one uh, with draw money i get it so right now uh, there's nothing much you have done in the program but so far i've given up the coding and we have uh, something else called else else statement which for you to just print for us maybe uh invalid in put. just like that so if you check this so far the skeleton of what we have uh, I, 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 if you check back in here this is it so we have this 
So if you if you check there, oh, check back. If you if you come back in here, <laughs> try to minimize this one so that you can take less time uh, debugging the system. Um, just try to bring this one this side a bit and try to reduce it, to, uh, use it also like that. So just shake here a bit. So if I try it from here, go back here, it should be like that. So when I take one, say, send money, but the system will end. How about if I come back in here and I press two to simply say, withdraw money. Now that's what I want. How about if someone user comes in and press something which is not one and not two? I give us something user presses five. So you simply say invalid input. Now this is just from my if statements. I know you guys, if it is new to you, don't worry. I'll make a video for you guys on all those stuff. And also you guys who have not yet happened to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I already have all those videos for if statements with the Python. And if at all for sure the one maybe if you happen to record down and maybe it was not nice or it happened not to interpret for you well, comment down below so that I can make for you what you understand and then you you keep yourself going with the Python so that you get to know what to do. Now I may not take a lot of time. I'm just going to go back in my program and show you something later. Now we need to have the structure of our program. But remember now when I say send money, what do we need to do? If I just take a little bit back to the previous system. What you guys, I showed you in my previous system. There's something I showed you. Uh, if you remember here that, uh, if you remember in this application, we said if one send money one to M10 user and Airtel user. So let's do that very fast. So because we need to, to know who are we sending money to. Because when you say, if choice is equal to one, if choice is equal to one, send money. But send money to two, to who? Now we need to define two things. One, for M10 user. Two, for Airtel user. So we shall simply say, send money. Then we can come down here and simply say one, two, uh, maybe MTN user, something like that, to MTN user. And we shall also have your another print, which is going to be two, Airtel, Airtel user, just like that. So if you check uh, right now in this application, Okay, so if you check right now in this application, you now we are framing up how the system is going to be like. You get? Uh, if you check, uh, this is it. If I say press one, send money. Now uh, we need again to give another condition. Now we are going to send money. Send money first. One, once to empty user, two, Airtel user. Now we need to decode to our program. We need to bring up our program to understand what we just said. You get so I'll need to come back in in my code and I just do some uh, kind of uh, uh, again defining up one must defining uh, uh, defining a variable to handle choice. That's what I will simply say. We need to find another variable which will handle choice. I give assumption. We said we want MTN. Uh, if it is one for MTN user, two for Airtel user. So I will simply say here, uh, we send money. But send money, if, if choice equals to one, send money, which we already have here. So we also want to bring another choice, because we need another choice now. Which another choice we are going to do in this way? We have MTN user and we have Airtel user. So we shall simply say maybe if X is equal to 1, that implies send money to MTN. If X is equal to 2, that implies, now, I may just define it as a user to, to make life simple. User equals to input, something like that, and I simply say, uh, uh, mm, we just simply say, select or uh, select user, select user. So I'll simply say select user. If you really check what I'm trying to talk about, it's like I'm trying to tell the system that select a given user. Because if a user is equal to MTN1 user, it will go to MTN2 for Airtel. Now we want us to select a user. Now to select that user, it will be an input box. So I will simply say here that maybe if user is equal to one on us, uh, if user is equal to one on us one, in this case, 
what do you need to do? So we need to have the system to print for us down and simply say maybe uh, M MTA user. You get? That implies to be going to MTN user. And if it is MTN user, what we need to do? What we need to define? So we need also another statement down here and say else elif elif what? Elif user equals to having two if user is same as having two into our system let, let, let also the system do the same thing for us let the system handle the same thing so I will simply say Airtel uh, uh, user that's how this the system is called in simple term so I'm just try to give some spacing within here and then you try to understand so this is elif elif like that sorry for, for that now this is what I mean if you just write on this system good uh, uh, enter choice so uh, mobile money system the system looks like this in a so I may just try to reduce one of these so that I get that like that so that when I try to run okay good to go so if I say maybe one to simply say send money empty and use it select choice so select choice select choice select choice I'm just going to put a backslash and so that I can go to the next new line yeah so that's good so if you check bargain one so I uh -huh, select choice so select choice add another thing there so that we can have something together kind of nice if possible so select choice we have one that's mtn user press one to simply say mtn user that implies if i also go back in the same system and i say one send money then i say two that is airtel user now that implies the system is good to go it can now interpret the even a kind of condition now we have really bridged our conditions into our system now what we need to do at the moment we would like now at the moment to see how the system can pick up those given conditions and formalize them into what we need now if i may take you back to the other previous system i did with you uh the sample i did with you guys last time if you check right now back here this is it you know m10 user now i'll simply say enter mobile number because i'll need a user to do that that stuff for me enter the mobile number uh, if at all the user does not have uh, for this system I may not do like this uh, I may do it like this to make it simpler so that you guys understand because if you try to press check right now at the moment uh -huh. if I say uh, 1 M10 user which is 1 so we need to know what does the person need to do if at all it's M10 user so I'll go back in here and I just do what I've just said to you you're going to find maybe uh, a phone number something like that phone number you get now whereby I may tell a user that it a number now uh, before doing that I may first define my constants because this system is not going to be connected to the database this is not going to be interacting with the database I'm going to just define my own constants like maybe a phone number so I'll just say phone number just somewhere here up yeah let me just define my phone number and then we can call it each time we need it so I can just define a phone number like that and then in the this one simply means phone number or let me write in phone phone underscore number uh, but maybe in a simple term let me use something simple so that you guys don't because someone may start asking what's defined blah blah I'll make another video for that don't worry and please make sure you comment down so that I can make for you each and of anything that I happen to hand here which is kind of confusing to you make sure you comment down so that I can always provide for you the link on how to come up with those given stuff so that you don't get lost you get you know I love you guys I love your friends and I want you guys to use this platform to learn what you don't know so that you get out there and you feel like yeah I've learned something so let me just define something. See if I'm going to just say phone underscore number instead of using define. And my phone number, I may just call it in this form of. I may just leave it like that. So it's cost is a number, but for simplicity, I can just put there maybe zero 
Uh, that's it, my that's my number. Now let's go back here now. So I'll simply say that define a number. So enter number. So I'll go and simply tell a system that print that and I simply say maybe enter enter phone number. Now before entering phone number, remember we said here that uh, if a user equals to this one, MTN number. So uh, let's simply say maybe that that's the case. Then you say enter phone number. So this is going to be like I give assumption it is number is equal to the input. Input that. Input. Input that. You get? This is what I'm trying to mean. That here I've defined a new number. This one we don't have it yet. You get? But it's going to be scanned by the system from the operating system or from the given user. No? The user is going, is going to be kind of scanning from the user. And as it's going to be scanning from the user, the system is going to be picking up that number. Now we can also give some conditions here, just to our simplicity. Uh, if I try to just save this, I try to shake, the system will do what's necessary. Like if I say one, do that, good. One for empty user, fine. Enter the number, that's what I'm trying to mean. Whereby I can enter the number this, but it will not, it will not do anything because it has no meaning. You get so I'll just put backslash end there and also come down here and say that uh, if if the number if the number is equal I would say if not equal do this else do the other but I'll just use the simple stuff so that you guys get to understand if the number is equal to the phone underscore number if this number the user is going to enter here, I give us something because we did say here like login, no, a user has to first give it the security kind of. I give us something, maybe the security information a user has to enter should be equal, uh, the number the user enters if it is equal to the number up down here defined by that given user. Then let the condition having or let the condition underneath it be verified to be true. So I will simply say if it's equal to this variable, which is that. Then I'll simply say that maybe uh, maybe I've said enter number if it is equal to that. Then what we need the system to do? We need the system to take us to one on us. Uh, remember, uh, enter amount. That's what I will simply say. So I may also call amount to be that amount is equal to input that you get. Now remember here at the moment we want the user to enter the amount. So I'll simply say enter amount to send. Enter amount to send. Get. So I may just use backslash and also there. Remember, we now want the user to enter amount to send. You get. Because we already know if it is true. Let's do that. Else statement. Else. Else do what? Else print. Maybe. Else let the system print for us. Uh, this one here down, the involved uh, stuff. Else, print that. This is what I'm trying to mean. Like, if at all a given user happen to enter a number one, uh, let be uh, empty user. You get number two. Uh, uh, if that's the case, enter phone number. And if at all the phone number user enters here in this input is equal to the number of readers defined somewhere. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? is equal to the number of defined here then let the user just enter amount to send now i'm also defined amount somewhere so that you have a kind of amount somewhere amount m that is equal to maybe i may say we have it as forty thousand. you get so amount equals to that so at the moment let me let us let us test the system let's test the system so if i say one that's good to go so if i say send money Good one empty user to airtel user now give assumption I will say maybe one because so far I'm working on version one for empty user so if I say one that one definitely will take me to empty user and then I click that will simply say use uh, empty user which is good enter phone number so I will come back here and uh, I put the phone number now remember. That's the condition I've said here that if the phone number is not equal to this number I've defined, then let the given user, uh, uh, let if the phone number is equal, then let it take me to this condition. Else, if at all the phone number I'm going to give is not really matching the number I've defined here up as a constant, 
here, then the condition is going to be wrong. So this is it. If I test with the true, 0, 70, 0, 44, 87, and hit enter, that's what I'm trying to mean. It will simply tell us enter amount to send. And I will say maybe amount to send is something like that. Now remember, here there's nothing much you did because the system does not have any condition given to it. So I give assumption, enter amount, the enter uh, choice one, enter amount, enter, then they select uh, send money, fine, to MTN user, good. M you MTN user, which again enter phone number, then I give the wrong number like that. Simply it will say invalid input. Now in this video tutorial, I'm not going to show you how to use one as go to or continue. I'm not going to use it in this video, but don't worry. As we complete with you guys this first complete introduction to a mobile money system, I'll teach you how to make another system on this very system, which I'll make another video on it, as we add on what we need to use for continuous statements uh, looping into a given conditions, and how can we bisect or go into the final part of the system to make use a one as dynamic or responsive. Now let's check here and try to handle this. So I've read a hand of that. That implies if a toilet user enters the wrong username, meaning they don't want a phone number, then that implies the system has to end. Otherwise, where there's this, we could even say, let the system definitely exit whenever it is wrong somewhere. Let the system just exit out. So this is what I try to mean. If you try to check here, if I say one, one, then I put the number, which is not that, the system will just exit to tell me that you really want to do that because here really it's really wrong, something wrong. Now here it will click, kill the entire system, the entire process, what you'll be doing. This is what I mean. When I click there, it will close the entire program. Uh, uh, that's what that statement called a kill means. So let me just try to uh, minimize my system back again so that we can find our proceeding. So I'm just going to remove this one off at the moment because I may not need it at the moment. But remember, I already said this. So I'm just going to come back in here down. I'm also going to give some if statement that if if what if amount is not is greater if amount if that amount a user is having if it is greater greater than what is greater than this if it is greater than this amount which is forty. This is what I try to mean. If it is greater than that. Let the system tell us that uh, uh, insufficient fund. Uh, print for us and say insa. Remember here you are going to do one on us uh, enter amount to send. You'd like to send money, but in use of your mobile money, you don't have enough money to send. Now, since you don't have enough money to send, the system is going to tell us that uh, the money you're going to send is not enough. So, since it is not enough, what I'm going to tell the system would like the system to to tell us that insufficient. Insa, insa I don't know whether that's the spelling. Please, if it is the spelling, then good. If it is not, then <laughs> tell me. Insufficient fund. Then I can simply say recharge, recharge, and continue sending. If that's the case. You get like if I try the money is not that, then let it do things to me. Now remember there's something here that I have not taught you, otherwise, our system is going to bring an error somewhere which I'll explain to you. Yeah, there's something called a string and integers data types. So we didn't respect data types. I know here to be successful, here to be successful. Now here on entering the number, if I enter the right one, which is good, 07, uh, 0, 7, 0, 44, 87, 56, 3. Good. Things good. But when I enter here, enter amount to send, I enter that. I'll just get an error. Like I've said to you, the system will give us an error because we need to respect the, the things we are dealing with. We need to verify for a system that we're dealing with integers, counting numbers. That implies in a simple term, we need to turn this into a counting number, either a float or an integer. So I'm going to use a float. Because the float at least will show us number with the decimal place values. You never know, maybe having it somewhere in the system. So I'll also use a float here to float for us the amount, just like that. Okay, so that the system can have those things and interpret them. Then again, on the other way around, if I try to come back in on our system here now, and I test again now, test that. 
2070 is 0.4487563. Good. If I say maybe I'm sending 20,000 or 20,000, the system will be now working because it will be respecting what it will be knowing that yes, I respected the, uh, the, the, the data type we are working up with. Now, also, you comment down about, about data types because I know I didn't explain much of it in this system, but I'll make a video for you guys on data types. If you're really interested and you feel like you're not okay with, comment down. I'll give you the video for I'll make for you guys that video. Now, let's go back in here on this similar system of ours. Uh, if you check right now at the moment, they might, the system can do that. But now, if I would like you to, to interpret for us, you know, yes, which phone number was the money sent and how much was sent, if possible. So let's do that. Let's do that. Let's do that. So if you check right now at the moment, if, 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 if amount is greater than that, tell us a sufficient fund. Else, else what? Else, print for us one on us uh, else let the system just print for us one on us uh, 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 amount which amount was that so which amount is going to be money you okay, get in this time around it's going to be money so amount which is going to be a float float from the amount which is amount that amount that with this uh, send amount sent successfully to number enter amount to send enter phone number uh, uh, let me just say the system will recycle on itself because now here I will say enter the amount to send maybe the number we are sending to uh, which is which is the number up or the number so which is a uh, phone number that's it so just paste that there that's it so this is it you get so, uh, uh, 20,000 sent successfully to number this. So, uh, that's it. Let's let, let test the system again. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Made a mistake here. This is going to be that. Go down. Then I use one last print. That. And then I close my print. like that sorry for that but that's it so if you check now again on our system here this is what i mean so if i say one good uh m10 user good uh, enter number 070 if i click on enter enter amount to send the amount i'm sending is 30,000. when i hit enter this is what the system will do. Uh, this is what the system will do. The system is telling us that uh, the 30,000 sent successfully to the number is. Yes. Yeah. So that's that's how this uh, this system is like. So let's wait for for part two of this system and we we'll see how can we uh, generate this system. So let's 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 now wait for the second uh, part of the system. So I wish you guys hope now you have learned how to to come up with this system. If you need the source code of this system, uh, you will comment down on this system. Uh, comment down, and then I will make this for you. So thanks for watching. I uh, wish you a nice time. Thank you.